NFL free agency, Broncos fans, is here. And with that, we are going to talk about all the different Broncos free agent targets in just a moment. But first, make sure you're subscribed because when the Broncos start signing a bunch of players, making some trades potentially, even cutting some guys, you don't want to miss a thing. You want to get the most instant and up-to-date news and rumors, which is why you have to be subscribed. So join nearly 13,000 strong here at the channel when you subscribe. Welcome in to the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Matthew Peterson. And on today's show, I've got the top free agent targets for Denver. I've really put together my list of guys. Now, before we show any names, keep in mind that free agency is very fluid. So if anyone you see on screen is already signed somewhere else or re-signed or anything like that, just move along to the next guy. Or if I say anything that becomes dated, just bear with me. But I think the first and most important place to start when it comes to free agency for Denver is the offensive line, specifically offensive tackle. So here are five guys. There's some more, but I'm kind of swinging for the fences on a few of these players. Mike McGlinchey from the 49ers, he's my number one guy. My issue is he's the number one guy for a lot of players, a lot of teams. So could that be an issue? Then there's Taylor Luan, who I toss on there just as a quick uh, PSA. I'm passing on him. He's missed so much football the last three years. I'm not interested in signing another injured tackle. Andre Dillard was a former first-round pick for the Eagles. He got buried on the depth chart. He could be a snake in the grass. You could get him for a little bit cheap and then find that first-round talent. Caleb McGarry was not exercised a franchise tag player for the Falcons. He was one of the best tackles in all of football last year after a slow start to his career. And then there's Juwan Taylor, who I kind of want to zoom in on for a second because Juwan Taylor has been, I wouldn't say necessarily rumored to the Denver Broncos, but he's gotten some noise, a little bit of chatter, right? Some dots being connected on a kid's menu at a breakfast spot. So he is expected to command around $17 to $18 million in free agency. The former second-round pick has not missed a start, and he has basically played every single snap with the exception of one or two last year in his entire four-year career. If Denver cannot land Mike McGlinchey because he goes elsewhere where they can offer more money, could Juwan Taylor be a good backup option? Now, Taylor's PFF grades in 2022... Not that good, honestly, right? You don't see ranking 65 out of 81 and think, boom, that's $18 million right there. But he did make a really good jump from year three to year four. So for that reason, I could see him commanding a decent market in free agency. And I could see the Broncos picking up the phone and inquiring what the asking price is. At the end of the day, Denver needs to make a splash signing at offensive tackle. If we settle for a Cam Fleming or Billy Turner level signing, pitchforks and we're rioting, right? We They need to really address this issue that I think was the biggest Achilles heel in 2023 outside or 2022 outside of Nathaniel Hackett. So with that solid jump from year three to year four, it's hard not to be excited about signing Taylor or a player at his level because it just feels like you're at least you're improving from what you had last year. But let me know. Would you sign him? Yes or no? This will be the pinned comment on today's show. So if you get an ad break, take advantage of it. Get your votes in down below. Moving on to some other free agent targets, this time at the edge position. There's Draymond Jones, who potentially by the time you're watching this, things could have changed, but he was not franchise tagged by the Broncos. I think he's probably going to find more money elsewhere. I think his time at mile high is over. Then there's Bud Dupree, Frank Clark, Arden Key, and Marcus Davenport. We'll look at this list in more detail in just a second. But first, I got to share with you guys some awesome information about today's sponsor, Athletic Greens. Now, I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. You can get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at Athletic Greens, uh, athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I personally recently gave AG1 a try because I hated taking pills or vitamins, and I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. I take AG1 in the morning, and it makes me feel ready to take on my day. It really helps me with starting my day on the right foot and getting into a healthier lifestyle. I start the day with making one great choice, AG1, and more healthy decisions than follow. 
Covering my nutritional bases for the day also couldn't be easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water, drink it first thing in the morning, and it's done. I also like that it costs less than $3 a day. Pretty good if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients, so win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Check it out. The links in the comments and the description of today's show. It comes with awesome benefits like promoting gut health, supporting your immunity, and boosting energy. Patrick, can we actually go back to the five names to keep an eye on for? Because I kind of want to go in depth about some of these players here for just a quick second before we really focus on one individual. Bud Dupree was released by the Tennessee Titans in a cap-saving move, also because he's been somewhat underwhelming since coming over from Pittsburgh. Frank Clark, he was released by the Chiefs. If he comes over and promises to steal a playbook on the way out from Kansas City, yeah, I could be interested in that. I mean, we know how dominant he's been for the Chiefs, especially in the postseason. There's Arden Key from the Jags. He's an ascending name, definitely an eye to keep an eye on. And then there's Marcus Davenport. Let's let, let's zero in on Davenport for a moment. Why? Well, Sean Payton drafted him 14th overall in 2018. So I don't know if Payton will look at this as an opportunity to re- reunite with Davenport or as an opportunity to go, that was a bit of a mistake taking him first round in 2018. I'm not going to compound that mistake by bringing him to my next team. There's a bit of a hiccup with Davenport. Davenport. It's that he's never played a full season in his five-year career. He's always had some injuries nagging him. And could it be Randy Gregory 2.0 signing a guy who's never played a full season and then expecting him to do so in year one? When you look at Davenport, his last couple of seasons, along with his career stats totaled at the bottom, talking about a guy who's coming off a half-sack season and 15 games played in 2022. To me, that doesn't really jump off the screen as that's a player you have to sign. I also feel pretty confident when I say Draymond Jones is not coming back to the Broncos. If they really wanted him back, I think they would have franchise tagged him to try and figure out a longer-term deal. And if he tests the open market, I think he's going to find more money elsewhere. So I don't expect Denver to really break the bank for Draymond Jones' replacement. Why? Because they kind of did that last offseason with Randy Gregory. So... Are they really going to sink their money into two big free agent contracts during the off se- uh, back-to-back off seasons for pass rushers? Probably not. One smaller name that's not going to cost you that much that I just want to throw out there is Dean Lowry. He has been with the Packers for his entire career so far, six, seven years at this point. Now, he's not coming off a great statistical season, but he's sort of a grinder, right? He's a guy who goes into the corner of the boards and gets the puck out for you. He's a player that might not light up the stat sheet, but he's had some really good seasons with the Packers where he has put together four or five sack seasons. So Dean Lowry could be a lower key move to add another pass rusher without necessarily spending a lot of money in free agency. Let's move on to the next position group that appears to be an increasing spot of need, and that is running back. Names I've outlined here, David Montgomery, Miles Sanders, Kareem Hunt, Devin Singletary, and Jamal Williams. We'll start breaking these guys down one by one, but the conversation really has to start with this player, Javante Williams. Why are you signing a bigger name running back or a more expensive one? Do you expect Javante Williams to return? That could be the clue, right? This could be the Broncos telling us that secretly they don't expect Javante Williams to come back for much potentially at all in 2023. He's coming off a major knee injury, right? Look at how long it took Dobbins and Barkley to not just come back from it, but also look like their normal self before the injury. So for that reason, and the way Russ played last year, they might want to lean on a ground game, and that might result in them investing into a pricier free agent running back. Two names that have been rumored or really surfaced about would be David Montgomery and Kareem Hunt. Both guys were specifically named by Matthew Barry from his NFL Combine takeaways as players the Broncos are looking at. In 2022, 
Neither player really jumped off the page, if you ask me. Kareem Hunt was an understudy to Nick Chubb, but even when he got the rock, he never really made a much of it. And at times, Montgomery was more or less being outplayed by his backup, Khalil Herbert. If I really had to pick one between the two, I'd go with Montgomery as long as it's not going to cost more than $11 million a season. Another name to watch for is Jamal Williams. Now, I think the Lions are going to try and bring back Jamal Williams, but the guy had 17 touchdowns last year. I mean, that is an ultimate sports trivia right there of what backup running back, well, almost a starter with the Lions when Swift was down, had 17 touchdowns. So, a thousand yards, 17 touchdowns. Like those are the numbers you expect to see out of the top five running backs in the NFL. If Denver can get him for eight to ten million a season as a one-year placeholder until Williams can return, and who's even to say that Williams is the future bell cow back of this franchise? Yeah, I'd be interested. Then there's Latavius Murray. Now Murray stole or captured, I should say, all of our hearts last year, right? The way he stepped into Denver and helped out an offense that was absolutely putrid. Yeah, I think a good chunk of Broncos country would like to see Murray come back. Maybe the Broncos entertain this idea strictly on a vet minimum deal. Sounds like Murray would be open to reuniting with his old head coach, Sean Payton. I just wonder if George Payton believes that Murray, the 30-plus-year-old running back, has any juice left in the tank. So here's what I want to know from everyone still watching right now. Should Denver sign a, a big-ish name running back, right? Should they go out and get a, a Miles Sanders or a David Montgomery or a Kareem Hunt? Or should they go maybe a little lower key, right, with a Latavius Murray and then just draft a running back in the fourth round and do kind of a committee backfield until they get Javante Williams back? Let me know in the comment section below.